Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the Ultimate Unity Tutorial and welcome to episode 9. So this time we're going to take a look at the skybox, we'll take a little look at some more lighting and we'll also have a little look at wind zones. So we're going to start with the skybox because the skybox itself can give a different effect of what the player sees as opposed to just having this default skybox. Now a skybox is essentially everything that surrounds all of this here so at the moment the default is just this blue one now a way of getting a skybox and there's plenty to actually choose from we can go to the asset store and we can do that by going window and then selecting asset store right here or holding control pressing number nine now i'm not going to go into too much detail when it comes to the asset store because i do have a couple of videos on the asset store and things you can find in there that really help you develop your own game so what we're going to do is we're going to start off by searching just the term skybox and obviously some people have a little bit of a budget if I spell skybox correctly that is so having a budget means you want to look for something free and we can do that by clicking free only and there is literally tons to choose from there's there's loads and I just want to say right now that everything I do in this tutorial everything I pick from this asset store is my own personal uh, like it's something I like because it's good I've had no input and I've not been contacted by anybody to say can you feature this this is something I've picked myself because I quite like it and I'm using this TGU skybox pack created by baby cake studio so if you I don't know perhaps want to take a little look at what else they have you can click on them they only have this skybox which is a shame but yeah Tons of videos on the asset store in my playlist go take a look so uh, click import or download and you can bring it into unity and if we head back to our scene uh, i've already gone ahead and downloaded it just to save time now to apply this skybox we have to go to window lighting and then settings and you'll see at the top oh, there's plenty of options to choose from here some of which we won't go into this time and others another time the one we're looking for right now is this skybox material. So if we click the little radial button there and just scroll up, you'll see all these different materials that you could apply as a skybox. However, randomly choosing something like that, probably not a good idea because that just looks a little bit odd. Same with all these here. Now, one thing you will notice as we're doing all this, the color or rather lighting in the scene changes. So what I'm going to go for, I'm going to choose, what should I have? I want something nice, but, you know, let's try nostalgia. Okay, so that looks pretty decent, but it's given a very yellowy uh, and greeny kind of vibrant feel, which I suppose is pretty good. But if we click on a new dawn, for example, you'll see it's much more relaxed. It's a calm kind of feel within the scene. And this is the kind of effect you can have by manipulating the skybox. And as I say, there's different materials you can choose. So let's say urban light, for example. Okay, dark and eerie, creepy kind of feel. I'm going to stick with, I'm, I'm torn between nostalgia and new dawn. Uh, you guys let me know in the comments which one you prefer of these two. I'm going to stick with nostalgia one just for now. So here we have the environment lighting and we can change it. You see, if we change the multiplier, it just creates this mad looking scene. And the same applies if we have zero, it just does the inverse. It's quite dark. So let's have it as one, or we could change to perhaps a color. And then we can manipulate this color to be relative to this scene. So for example, if we have it pink, you can see it has a pink hue to the game. So you need to figure out what kind of look and feel your game is going to have and at the moment. This kind of reminds me a little bit of No Man's Sky. I'm not quite sure why, but it kind of does. So I'm going to go for a yellowy green, maybe, and change it a bit here. Because I want it kind of, do I want it bright? Do I want it, do you know what? Nope, I've changed my mind, guys. I'm actually going to go for New Dawn. And I'm going to have my color. And I'm going to have it about there okay so i like how that looks 
So back in our scene now, we can just close all that down and you'll see, yep, it looks okay. So I'm going to take the directional light and if I turn it off, you'll see not a lot changes. However, if we turn it on, but increase the intensity, you'll see things change relative. Now it's up to you how you want to handle this because if we go back to window, lighting and settings, we could always change the source back to skybox. And again, you'll see how that impacts everything depending on how you want your game to look. So we could theoretically have that quite high, say 2.85 and turn the intensity of the light down to one. And again, we could brighten this up there. So I think that looks different for now. It's, it, it's progress at least. And don't forget, you can always change the direction of light to a point light if you wanted to. So lighting also plays a part in how your game will look. And theoretically, as I say, we're playing around at this point and doing different things. So we could always turn off skybox and turn off directional light and give a very dark kind of scene. But same time, we could turn that back on and increase the intensity and you'd see what kind of impression that gives. Could also create that into a point light and increase the range quite a lot I would say it's probably not yeah it's, it's not giving the best results but if we double click it you can see that the range is covering pretty much all of the terrain there so let's undo all of that back to 10 double click on our light and we should probably move it into place so I'm going to zero out the position on that light which doesn't really help much to be honest uh, let's attach that to our FPS controller and then zero out the position there. So all that'll do is that'll make it dead center of our first person controller. So if we double click it, it takes us back to our controller. And you can see right there the impact that that's having. So if we press play, you'll see that the light is following us around. So again, depending on what kind of game we're aiming for, what kind of look, that could be useful. So I'm going to reset all this back to uh, directional and take it off our character. Back into window, lighting, settings. I'm going to change it to a color. And we'll leave it at real time, so that's fine. I'm going to make it just a bit darker to about there. Uh, change the intensity back to one. And... Okay, so we at least have the scene looking a little more, how can I put it, environmental now. So next thing we're going to look at is wind zones. Now wind zones are a way of controlling wind, as you would expect. However, it's not relative to every object within the scene. So if we go to, a compo um, not component, game object, 3D object, and wind zone, Already we can see that these trees are being affected by the wind zone. And simply just placing the wind zone into the scene will give an effect. And we can see the trees bustling in the wind. Now we've already spoke about the grass itself. And at least I think I have. So the grass is relative to the terrain. It isn't affected by the wind zones. So if we click on the wind on the terrain itself, Objects within this section here, the paint details, aren't affected by the wind zone. They're relative to their own wind force here. And trees, paint trees, is. So if you have grass, which is in paint trees, then that will be affected by the wind zones. Another good way of controlling wind zones is for turbulence, i.e. gusts of wind. And you can change these in the settings here. So if we have our main wind at, let's say, 15, you'll see it's quite breezy, but it can also warp the trees a little bit too much. Hence, if we have 150, it looks a little bit crazy. So if you're going for that kind of look, then yes, by all means. Turbulence, once again. Again, if you hover over it, it'll tell you it's the randomness and strength. So 50, you can see just how violent that could be, especially if we increase the main wind. You can see it's a bit crazy. So playing around with these figures trying to get the right kind of feel for your game is perfect there. And obviously these two down here, if you hover over, tell you what you need to do. So frequency 
and the magnitude, so which is the strength, I should say. So strength we could have as 20, and you'll see yet again, it's a bit crazy. So you need to be wary of just how you're using these. Don't, you know, don't be a little bit crazy. Putting that up high just gives a, a broken kind of look. So always keeping the frequency kind of low is a good idea. Now, another thing to note with wind zones is you can change it to be spherical. That means it will happen within the radius of where it actually is. So if I move the wind zone onto our FPS controller and press play, we'll be able to see that these trees aren't really having an effect unless we get close. So we'll have to increase the radius. Let's put the radius to 100. A thousand? Yeah. So you need to be wary of how you're using this radius. So if we have 500 and then move our player away, we can see that not a lot is really going to happen to these trees. So let's change it to 200. So there, you can see the trees are kind of motionless. However, if we get closer, we should be able to see that they at least do something. Is it 250? Let's try 300, 400. So 500 looks like it is about the radius that something would happen. So if I change it to spherical and double click, we can see by zero the position. It is surrounded by a blue line, and this is the radius. So everything within this radius circle, both uh, sorry, <laughs> horizontal and vertically, uh, will be affected by the wind zone. So just be mindful of how big your actual radius is. So if I press play again, and move outwards to here. We should be able to see that these trees have been affected by the wind zone that we're contained in, and those ones aren't. So that could be kind of useful if you have grass, which is, let's say, based around the paint trees, and you want to give the impression that you're stood in that grass. Well, you could have a very small radius wind zone, which would distort that grass as you get close to it, so you would see it's not quite right. So that's another way of using a wind zone. So I'm going to change it to directional, leave it as it is, and obviously we can see the direction there. We could uh, rotate, so you can see the rotation of the trees as I rotate it around, so you can see what's going on there. So again, that's entirely up to you how you want to control the direction. So I'd recommend at this point playing around with the lighting, playing around with uh, your skybox, trying to find the right skybox. And you guys let me know in the comments what you'd actually like to see for a skybox, because is this good? Is this what we want to see in the game? You guys let me know. So next time, what we're going to have a look at is we're going to take a look at fade screens. So fade in, fade out, and we'll also look at being able to pick up objects. So in this case, let's pick up our axe, for example. So we start with our axe right now. So why don't we create something where we can walk up to it and pick up the axe? So we'll go for that next episode too. So guys, until then, thank you very much for watching.